so I want to ask you, LZ, because Colin Kaepernick is is the sort of icon of this movement, and he was there, you know, four years ago when he started this, taking a knee. And of course, as we mentioned in the lead up, you know, the last really iconic American athletes were those at the 1968 Olympics, and Tommy Smith has been talking, saying he cannot believe that what he did you know, all those decades again, ago rather, you know, still is necessary today. Just just put it into context. And of course, the great Muhammad Ali also put his career and his life and his reputation and his earnings on the line when he refused to support and go to Vietnam. Put that into context, if you like, in, in the sports world. Well, you know, sports in general, I know people don't like to think of it this way, but sports has always been used as a platform to make larger social issues sort of statements as well. Whether it's Jackie Robinson in 47, whether it's boycotting South Africa and this apartheid, whether it's boycotting the Soviet Union's presence in the Olympics because of the invasion of Afghanistan, sports has always been utilized as a way to communicate a message, uh, a military message, a political message, but multiple messages indeed. And so some of the people that you refer to are simply following the tradition of what sports has always been. But I will also add, too, it's important that we talk about Peter Norman, who is the white man who was on the podium in 1968 in Mexico City as well. He also sided with fighting for criminal, for fighting for justice, fighting for racial justice. He sided with that. And when he returned home in Australia, he, too, was ostracized. And that's what's needed. It's not just a black issue. Racism isn't something for black athletes to push across and try to get resolved. It's an issue for everyone. And we also need Peter Normans of today, white athletes joining in with their black athletes, like a Colin Kaepernick, to put an end to this as opposed to being complicit with their silence. 